Hello there and welcome to this week's Owl Diary. Hi there, only me from Owl Adventures and I have some feathers in my hand. Why is that? Well, it's springtime, summer's on its way and we have glorious sunshine today. Can't say we've had lots of glorious sunshine over the last week or two, but today we have. And the long days, as well as feeding our birds lots of delicious food, means that they start to molt, which is dropping feathers and growing new ones. These ones are from Eva, our Canadian great horned owl. Some of these feathers are nice looking and some of them are a bit broken. That's because Eva is a scruffy old bird. And even though we try our best with her enclosure, her free flying, her nutrition, etc., she'll still break the odd feather here and there so she's having a good malt at the moment and most of our birds are feather perfect some of them are very close to it and we've got one or two that could do with some new feathers Eva being the worst for that we're also malting our falcons out at the moment they're having a nice malt dropping lots of feathers almost every day and growing lots of new ones they're eating lots of prime quail and um, some mice some chicken things like that bits of pheasant lovely delicious stuff and this helps them to grow those new feathers because when you're growing feathers it does use energy so when it's summertime and there's more daylight and there's more food available, the bird's brains essentially think, aha, we have plenty of energy, we can start to drop feathers, we can afford to use that energy and regrow some new feathers. Essentially the bird's ways of repairing themselves. So this is Bailey and he is a common barn owl, he's four years old. And the problem that barn owls have in the wild is they are quite a fragile bird. They don't have the same amount of waterproofing oils in their feathers as other birds do, so they're not so good in bad weather. And back in 2009 and 2010, we had a couple of very bad winters with a lot of snow, incredible amounts actually, which in some occasions didn't seem to melt for a long time. The barn owls really did struggle with that weather. They're not like a great grey owl that's designed to catch rodents under the snow. They find it very difficult to catch their prey. And of course, when it's cold, they need to eat more to keep themselves warm as well. So we did lose, unfortunately, a lot of barn owls in those years. Now, I'm pleased to say that barn owl numbers have increased over the years, over the last decade or so, due to various conservation projects, uh, nest boxes, ringing birds, and that kind of work. So we have seen a gradual increase overall in the UK, but they are still in trouble. Even though they're not classed as an endangered species, there are far less of them around than there used to be, which is unfortunately the case of most wildlife in this country and around the world. One of the main problems they have is traffic. Barn owls naturally fly rather low, searching for rodents. And they're generally nocturnal, although they sometimes fly during the day as well. So often they get themselves in front of the oncoming vehicles and they get struck. And this is one of the biggest problems they have. Another issue that they have, especially with the female barn owls, is after breeding. When that female barn owl finally leaves the nest, uh, the, the tree hollow, the nest box, after many weeks of feeding those young, she's actually kind of filthy. All those pellets she's been sat in and such. So the first thing she does when she gets out is she wants to try and find somewhere to have a wash. Best thing she'll normally find would be a water trough, especially as they're found around farmland. But the barn owl does not realise how deep that trough is and they end up drowning in there. So as many as 9% of all female barn owls have been known to drown after uh, leaving the nest. And the simple solution is putting little steps inside that trough so the barn owl can actually climb out again. That's all that's needed. So even though the barn owl is a fantastic predator, it's got that amazing hearing for locating rodents. It's got these amazing sharp talons, that ability to pounce on their prey with such force and the fantastic silent flight to sneak up on their prey. They still are a bit of a fragile bird. And that's why when we do rescue barn owls from the wild, it does feel really very important. Well, we're here with Callum. Why am I mentioning this? Well, it's his last day. Oh, sad face, get the violin out. Anyway, he's here with Eva, our Canadian great horned owl. And here is a picture that Callum has sent me of him holding him when he first came along to the display. And it looks like he's a lot further away from him than right now. He's got more comfortable with her. So Callum, you were moving on to bigger, better things. He's moving to Preston, make that of where you will have that. But yeah, he's been volunteering for how many years now? About five? 
six, I think. Six years. Six. Oh. Six. On and off, you know, not every day or anything, but yeah, for six years. So one of our longest serving volunteers, and I still haven't given you a, a polo shirt, so never mind. Um, but yeah, so what have you, you know, what have you gained from volunteering with Our Adventures? What, what kind of things are you taking away from your experience? Well, it's definitely improved my confidence a lot. Mm. You know? um, I've learned a lot about owls and um, I don't know. <laughs> That's a pretty good answer. I mean, the thing is, our volunteers are crucial because they're handling the birds, they're helping us fly the birds, they're talking to customers, they're helping back at the headquarters, if you like, helping to do the husbandry work and again flying them and so on. And I couldn't do it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, do this work without their help. So thank you, Callum, for all the help you've given us over the years here in York. We've had some really great days working together and I wish you all the luck moving on to bigger better things there you've got a new job and you know an exciting new job a very creative job which you, you they were impressed with your CV partly because you know you'd volunteered somewhere and I'm not going to take any credit whatsoever of course for you getting that job though he clearly would not have got the job without Will volunteering for us of course but there we go so anyway thank you very much Callum for all your help over the years and uh, best of luck for the future thank you So we're really looking forward to next week. It's the half term week, nine days of pure busyness in our York display. And we're also back at Escape as well with our indoor display. We've got some reptiles there. In fact, next week's Owl Diary, I'll show you what we do there in that video. But this week, I want to just very quickly mention branching owls. It's often a case in this country and all around the world really, that people mistake baby owls that they find perhaps on the ground or perched on a low tree branch as an abandoned or orphaned owlet. This is not the case and in the UK it's the tawny owls specifically which we tend to see branching. Now branching is when they're beginning to learn how to fly, just the early stages of fledging and at that age they're still very fluffy birds. If a human goes near these branching owls the parents will most certainly abandon their young so if it ever happens to be that you come across a baby owl on the ground or where it may be please do not approach leave it well alone keep an eye on it from a distance and if you're concerned call your local falconry center or someone who understands birds of prey that you can trust because it's really important that those owls stay in the wild I'd also like to say that if you're a recent subscriber, then thank you so much. We only began this channel really in September and back then we had about five subscribers. We're approaching 200 now. So this little channel of mine is growing and it's all thanks to you. And there are even videos we put out months ago that only had a handful of views to begin with that have suddenly taken off, like the focus on the burrowing owls video, for example. The algorithm has sort of shown that to a few people and now people are watching that all around the world and sending me lovely messages Messages about the brewing owl so that's just showing how it's working so like I say thank you so much if you have subscribed otherwise that's all for this week and I look forward to seeing you next week for our next owl diary thanks for watching <laughs>